special edition of Mock the Week. This show is a selection of outtakes, best of material, and a lot of stuff you won't have seen before. Hope you enjoy it. Yes, the answer I was looking for was Tory's launch election campaign. It's election time again, with David Cameron saying this year's vote could not come soon enough. Although the date is as yet to be confirmed by the Prime Minister, the Conservatives have begun announcing their policies in a bid to woo voters and regain power. So how do they launch the campaign? Well, mainly by putting up a big poster of his face. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's, he's wearing so much makeup, he might as well just say, Tory, because you're worth it. <laughs> It is astonishing. It is, it is, I just think they yeah. should have run, it's like on 760 poster sites, they should have just run this poster instead. Look at my big shiny face. <laughs> look at it, look at it. Look at, the way this, uh, look at the way my forehead glow follows you around the room. Uh, he looks like a cross between David Dickinson and Pingu. <laughs> <laughs> a cross that we've all been waiting a long time to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you that penguin vote? Yeah. No one's gone after that before. <laughs> 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 if, you did, if you did all of us and things like waddling around. <laughs> 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 they would close down CBeebies, wouldn't they? What are you doing, Dickinson? Leave him alone! <laughs> <laughs> take it, take it, you little bastard. Take it. <laughs> no, no. I can't waddle so, away quick enough there. <laughs> How much do you have to love yourself, you know, to launch your, your campaign with no policies and just a big picture of your own face? <laughs> you know, yeah. we kind of now know what both leaders are going to say to us. Gordon Bryan's going to say, don't trust the Tories, they'll put up taxes. And basically David Cameron saying, don't you wish your girlfriend was a <laughs> <laughs> Don't you? What you have to remember is that Cameron was in PR. I mean, PR, I mean, I was 12 years old and I had a paper round. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very... Uh, <laughs> It's a poster. He's trying to sell it. He's trying to sell it on the NHS, isn't he? That's the, that's the image he's got. It's all about the NHS. And now I'm slightly worried that Gordon Brown is going to have a poster about health as well, mm. with a big picture of Gordon Brown, and then next to it, catch it, kill it, bin it. <laughs> We have issues with the big shiny face. Uh, I also have problems with the slogan. Yeah. You know, because yeah. every time I see that, uh, we can't go on like this. In my brain, the baby goes, with suspicious mind. Yeah. <laughs> see what he also, he also said, didn't he? He said there are some parts of Britain where actually you're more likely to see your dad drunk than doing a day's work. I wonder where that is then. Is it the House of Commons? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about my drink, but generally there are parts of Britain which one is more likely to see your father drunk in than at work. Pub. Like a pub, for example. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing here? Well, I don't work here. What the hell are you doing here? Yeah. When I was little, right, my dad used to enjoy a drink. He wouldn't mind uh, me telling the nation. Um, <laughs> well, you used but, to enjoy a drink. I know, but listen, listen, it's really weird. So I remember once I was asleep and I heard, Greetings, Russell. I was terrified. And it took me two weeks to figure out that he'd put a walkie-talkie underneath my bed. <laughs> <laughs> and every time he was getting him pissed, he's like, Oh, yeah. I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good when Dad's drinking. Like, oh, it was another bit in the middle of getting drunk where he'd sober up and realised that this was a horrendous thing to do to a child. <laughs> it's not horrendous, it's hilarious. I found it, did I confront it? Put it under my brother's bed. <laughs> So we, could, we had friends who had, uh, who had a baby monitor, uh, yep. staying in the hotel with a baby monitor with a baby next door, and you could talk through your side of the monitor and talk to your child in the next room, right? So when they heard the child crying, and uh, they went, no, it's all right, you can go to sleep, it's okay, we're only next door, it's all fine. And then they heard the small child replying and go, okay, good night, wall. <laughs> called Picture of the Week. I show the panel an image from a recent story and ask them to tell me what's going on. So, teams, what's going on here? Oh, <laughs> a very short policeman and a very the... tall policeman. This is, this is the from... um, controversial it's... new Bring Your Child to Work. <laughs> That's, <laughs> harsh. That's harsh. Is this from Heat Magazine, the story that Deck has got a part in the bill without telling Ant? <laughs> I reckon saying, you couldn't buy me some bags, could you? <laughs> Do you know what's, what's great about this story? He is the, uh, the smallest policeman in the country. He's five foot tall, right? There's a woman laughing, just the idea of it. <laughs> but, but he's made 17 arrests this week, and I bet you money a lot of those revolve around the words umpa lumpa. <laughs> yes. What did you say? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'd say, say most of the handcuffs are around people's ankles. Uh, <laughs> but, do you know he's a black belt in karate? Yeah. I retract everything I've just said about the man. Uh, <laughs> It's bizarre yeah. about it, right? He can arrest a man, but he can't go on some ride to Orn Towers. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're ever running away from him, just go on a ride he can't get. 
It's actually not that small, right? It's, it's five foot. That's pretty small. It's very it's small, but he's not like, you know, tiny, tiny. If you think he's saying to the other one, I hope nobody's photographing this, I look ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> do you know, do you know what his nickname is? What his nickname is? Pitch Piglet. No. <laughs> no, not Piglet. <laughs> is he... There was, no, there was no way this is going to be treated sensitively here, was there? No, no. There was no way it was going to be. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him. And getting a job that would have previously been yeah. shut down to him. Oh, no, God, no, no, no. His nickname. nickname. Inspector Gadget? No. <laughs> nickname is Laptop. Uh, <laughs> people say he isn't really useful, but he can be very useful because if you think about it, they can dress him up as a kid and catch Peter. <laughs> Just put him near some swings and he's a black belt. When the nonce arrives, kabang! <laughs> The, the one on the left's wearing uh, an, an overcoat and the one on the right isn't. And it just goes to prove, once again, that when it comes to performance, a Mac is head and shoulders over a PC. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, who has gobbled up Cadbury this week? Kraft. Kraft, yeah. Yes, indeed. Kraft, whose only contribution to human progress so far is the invention of cheese that can also be used as a bookmark. <laughs> So the, the guy who invented Kraft, he was like John Kraft or something. His original job was the company built stuff. He was a door-to-door -door cheese salesman. Well, actually... If you were from another era, would you ever trust Ding Dong? Would you like some cheese? No. <laughs> the man walking door-to-door. -door. I can beat that. My mate, when he was younger, used to be a door-to-door -door karate salesman. <laughs> Can he do karate? No, he can't. <laughs> that, that question there could have been answered so many. You could have asked that question any week. Who gobbled up Cadbury's this week? Obviously, this week it's Kraft. Most weeks it would be sad, lonely women at that uh, sort of uh, uh, I'll tell you what, though. I'm lonely, you, you I'm might get lonely. And also, <laughs> there is something. No, I'm genuinely worried about dairy milk, though, because it. I don't know where I'm. It's my one source of milk. For lots of a dairy milk, your bones would be nothing, you know? Okay. <laughs> And the news they kept saying, uh, they just kept saying that uh, Cadbury's had been taken over by an American food giant. And I think you're going to have to be more specific, because about half the population of America could technically be described yeah. as American food giants. Yeah. You could say that the Jolly Green giant, he's one of yours, isn't he? He's, he's British, you could say that he could defend. He's British, he's fictional, Dara. <laughs> fictional British. So he's green, what would make you think he wasn't one of yours? <laughs> about British institutions becoming foreign when the royal family have been German since 1700. <laughs> there was a guy called Ray Egan. Ray Egan is the, a retired policeman who stands outside British companies when they're about to be bought uh, in Look. order to protest it, actually, and stands like that, uh, dresses up as John Bull, uh, Kraft. Uh, what I love about it is the fact that he goes, hey, hey, <laughs> hey. and uh, just Kraft go to hell, but hey, so Kraft return, yeah? Go to hell. Uh, <laughs> There was this big thing with all the phone debates when people were phoned up complaining and it was a beautiful moment of radio. I don't know if anyone heard it, but there was a woman on the phone saying, it's terrible what they've done, it's terrible that, that we're allowing them to sell a British institution like Cadbury's. And, and the radio presenter, it was Jeremy Vine, actually said, well, well, are you going to join the calls for a, a boycott of Cadbury's chocolate? She went, oh, I won't go that far. <laughs> Me a box of 48 bars, the standard size bars of dairy milk for Christmas, and I think she thought it would be like one a day and it would last for ages. And I just opened it with a kitchen mic. <laughs> <laughs> I did think about putting them all out on the bed and like writhing around naked, like in a portal. Don't do that. Never, never mix They're sex hard. and chocolate. And Women tend to look like morph. <laughs> It's called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask you to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features the G20 leaders. Well, uh, saving the world financial system, that was me. What else? Uh, inventing the space hopper, that was me. Battle of Agincourt, uh, that was me. Um, so, Obama, we need to talk about Gordon Brown. Uh, yes, I know. He's, uh, he's claiming credit for everything. It's a problem. He, uh, he needs to be stopped. Yes, well, I will have a word with our friends, the Russians, see if they can use their methods. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's okay, but when it happens, my country can't be implicated in any way. There must be no mess, and we don't know what happened, okay? Oh, oh, my tiles. <laughs> hey, Dimitri, we're just talking about you. Yes, I know, I have you bugged. <laughs> <laughs> it's about Gordon Brown. Yes, the Gordon Brown problem. Well, leave it with me. I'll talk to Putin. So, it needs to look like an accident, yes? <laughs> oh, time for my Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, your, your chance over there! No chance over there! No moment, shut up! Ah, oh, Nico! I'll be with you in a minute. I'm just looking through the Hollyoaks calendar of 2010. Oh, look at the box on that. Uh, could you do Berlusconi in a two-for-one deal? 
Well, uh, let's have a look around. Oh, look, there's Gordon Brown. He's taking credit for the moon landings. It's unbelievable. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Well, well, it must be. Someone has told him. We must speak. We have done what you ask, Master. We have stolen Chinese delegate speech. <laughs> That's it. Look up. Look around. Look, uh, look presidential. Ah, <laughs> uh, where's the Viagra's working? Oh, no. Hang on. That is the microphone. <laughs> oh, God. This uh, speech is so boring. Where, where's my, uh, where's my speechwriter? Where's my speechwriter? <clears throat> is Michael McIntyre about? <laughs> Oh, wait, Gordon, will you lend me a speech? If you don't, I'm going to look like a fucking dick. Uh, uh, yeah. So, with uh, Tendulka moving on to 51, India... Well done, yes. Okay. In other news, what have we learned about pet owners this week? We've learnt, apparently, that if you own a cat, that means you're more intelligent. Yes, that was the survey that we yeah, did. Yeah, which is absolute nonsense. Owning a cat doesn't help your life in any way. I used to have a ginger cat, and uh, I woke up with it on my face. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever experienced terror like that. You're asleep, and then... Ah! <laughs> I've been headbutted by Anne Robinson. Right? <laughs> and we never knew where he was. We had this cat in our house. Every so often, you see him. It's like a ging alien moving around. Right? <laughs> the worst moment this ever happened, right? I just got out of the shower. I was naked. And I was looking for some pants on the floor. I bent down. I generally heard, right? And my cat was in my cupboard. Obviously, saw my balls and went, hello. <laughs> went up and went this. Just caught one of them. Made one ball hit the other. He was using me like an executive toy. And here's the horrible thing. It wasn't entirely unpleasant. You've now got a mental image that you, in fact, have five testicles. <laughs> I would be on this show. I'd be in some German circus. Behold! <laughs> it is a ludicrous myth, though, that, that cat owns an iron cat. But the, the myth that they're, they're independent, oh, where yes, dogs are uh, not independent. As opposed to dogs can learn and cats cannot learn, because dogs have bigger brains, more intelligent. Like, I mean, because it's just a transposing human traits onto animals. Oh, they're very independent the way they wander off. They're not really independent. Yeah. You never come home and go, how's the cat? And your wife goes, still talking about moving to Paris. <laughs> Very independent I can. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am bored of this place. Uh, I wish you strike out on my own. Uh, it's like when they say a, do a dog is a man's best friend, and I always think that's a bit presumptuous, because the dog would be like, well, yeah, we're friends, but we're, we're not best friends. <laughs> I mean, I want to go off with your leg, but that doesn't count. <laughs> Talking what? of intelligence, though, this was researched by the University of Bristol. That's yeah. Right. yeah, and you're thinking, why? Why have they bothered to do that? They also found out, apparently, if you own a cat, you're less likely to own a dog. Yeah. Oh! Well done, the University of Bristol. You're probably also less likely to own a pet mouse, be allergic to fur, or hate cats. <laughs> In other political news, whose human rights has David Cameron not been supporting? This burglars, day? Day. Burglars. burglars. Can you believe it? He now says that burglars, when they enter your house, have no human rights. Which is a bit of a fit foot, wasn't it? Because he wanted us to hug a hoodie. He now wants us to clobber a robber. <laughs> <laughs> It's just it's hilarious, isn't it? Like, what I love about whenever there's any story about like sort of robbers coming into your house, how macho blokes got to come into my house and knock him out. I'll say this now: if any burglars arrive of mine, take the lot. <laughs> I'll be under my bed weeping. That's it's what I'm doing. I think. I think you shouldn't be allowed, uh, you know, fight a burglar in your house, but you should definitely be allowed to do some weird sexual stuff. To <laughs> will turn you out, burglar. <laughs> you're going to feel like you're already in prison. <laughs> Why, by the way, is Miley in class involved not? Because, because she was, uh, she, there were, burg there were people in her garden, there were intruders in her garden, and she waved a uh, kitchen knife at them, she was brought in by the police, largely for waving the kitchen knife, but mostly for shouting, okay. this isn't just a kitchen knife, this is... Uh a cold steel, hardened Marks and Spencer's kitchen knife. Nice. 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 <laughs> it should be pointed out. Like, I mean, that is what be, those that had the story was reported. But the police don't, you know, have no record of ever giving out to her for uh, the term is brandishing a uh, kitchen knife. <laughs> you think like, it wasn't if, like, when she saw them, she went all ninja on their ass and started like <laughs> daubing blood on their face at the window, <laughs> slamming the glass against the patio, and then, and then she turned off the lights. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, wouldn't that be crazy if you were in Mylene Class's house and she cut her own phone line? <laughs>
She flicks the switch and suddenly the walls are all in ultraviolet. Uh, you're in my lean house now. Yeah, you're yeah. in my lean house now. <laughs> and you're not leaving. leaving. <laughs> and there you hear the piano. Oh, the yeah. piano. <laughs> really, at the, really at the higher end of the piano. <laughs> you see someone waving a knife out of a kitchen window. Generally, that means, would you like some cake? <laughs> where you live, man. <laughs> Good timing. Right, man. We're just serving it up. Yeah. But cake is lovely. It's a chocolate sponge. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, you, you, you didn't grow up in certain areas of Bristol. That doesn't mean that at all. Yeah, <laughs> we meet, we dance in. <laughs> chocolate sponge. Let's yeah. come out of the Arga. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> where did you grow up? In a Just William book. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, recently come out of hiding. Tiger Woods. Yes, indeed. I'm not convinced of this whole idea of sex addiction no. clinics. That's all these solid. sex addicts going around other people who are also <clears throat> sex addicts. <laughs> It'd be like going to Overeaters Anonymous and finding that everybody else in the class is in fact a cake. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be honest with you, it's unfair everyone's having a go at him. He's called Tiger. If you're called Tiger and you're not doing a bit of shagging, there's something wrong. <laughs> In the clinic, uh, he's getting preferential treatment, isn't he? And, uh, and, that, and all the other, <laughs> and all the other inmates, whatever they're called. Inmates. Uh, oh, <laughs> I'm not sure how strict it is, to be honest. In they get really, they're getting really annoyed at him, and it's just really upsetting for them because they can't even like have a wank to calm down. <laughs> That's not why you well, have no. a wank, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go. Either that, that program has offended me. I should either write a letter to the BBC or crack one off. I don't know what to say. What are the economic implications, by the way? Oh, oh, he's, he's, loads. He's, he's lost some sponsorship. Accenture. Yeah. They've said that they're not going to sponsor him anymore. He's lost Gillette as well, hasn't he? Because yeah, apparently yeah. razors aren't the best a man can get anymore. A hot tub full of slabs. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, other nominees for our image of the week. What's going on here? Uh, that no. is the face of Jesus on the nan bread. Oh. Yes, <laughs> it is. A posing pouch for an evangelical Christian. <laughs> <laughs> it is a weird Christian thing and a weird Catholic thing to, to see images of Christ yeah. with the Virgin Mary. I mean, for this one, for example, what's that in? That's Jesus in someone's back. It looks like someone's been bruised. It is a bruise. Is it's it a bruise? Jesus in a bruise. Is it really? uh, it's a bit of bruise. That looks more like Albert Einstein. Yeah. <laughs> That is a, that is a good call. Cool, Young Einstein, darker hair, <laughs> in a bruise. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Jesus appeared at the curry, right? Because, you know, they'd ordered some bread and then four lagers, and he was thinking, no, should I have a glass of red wine to go with the bread? I'd better appear and tell them. I mean, <laughs> you know, some joke like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've never seen something give up as elegantly as that. You know what I mean? Like, some wine, some bread. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that was the IKEA of jokes. Here's the stuff. Let's <laughs> 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 just lean it together, lean it off each other. That goes Screw there. That goes there. You it's don't need me. Let's just <laughs> hammer it together. <laughs> Other guns for some That's reason. Right. I'm gonna load. I'm, re I'm just tooled up this That's week right. with foam weaponry. This is my own recreation of the Dam Busters. Busters, <laughs> <laughs> Dam! Oh, the Busser, the Busser! And now a special note. <laughs> but sorry, that woman's laugh is amazing. So. <laughs> it was a horrific crime. It was a horrific crime. <laughs> a woman was attacked with a blowtorch. <laughs> Wish it was you. It's <laughs> 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 the highest a British rocket has ever gone. <laughs> I'll ask, these are other questions than the ones I've well, already had to correct. No, you're already doing the thing, which is the reason why I've had to do it again. I know. <laughs> so, We're so. going to break you, darling. Oh, I broke you. about an hour and a half ago. I am floating above this having an out-of-body experience in this thing. <laughs> I right? could no more give a shit. I have... <laughs> my bladder is blocked up the fucking wazoo. Right? So, <laughs> oh, Our first topic, please. Oh, <laughs> Kevin, you're not in position. I need some technical assistance as well. I'll just clap this back on. That runs his ass. 
He can't sit down if his ass isn't working, can he? <laughs> he falls through the chair. That's on the belt, that's why it's the... That's all right. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Cheers, oh, mate. That's going to be in the outtakes, just you getting fingered by a man like that. By a competition winner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when Barack Obama got in, because I, I genuinely never thought I'd be able to say it in my lifetime that the President of the United States is fit. What, you fan Clinton? Come on. Uh, yeah, I would, but I mean, yeah. I, right if there's money involved, of course. Yeah. What a weird moment on TV, me pimping out Bill Clinton. <laughs> Bill Clinton's like so a mere clown. Hey, twit. Yeah. 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 Who wants to go in there? Jack. Hey. Uh, that was a bit, can I do it without the hay? It was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> it, was half, uh, like, it, was a, it was like a half hay. If I could do it song as well. As well can I just try a little bit more manly? <laughs> yeah, okay, fine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, also not impressive. Really, you're uh... <laughs> Just let me get in the zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you get into the zone? You get that butch vibe you've been rocking for a while now. Because uh, I know a lot of women are going, that is a man who could father some kids for me right now. <laughs> One last attempt because I'm running out of... Uh, go, on, go, on, okay. go on, go on, go on, go on. Please, go on. Slow, yes, let's do it properly. Here we go. Right. Oh! oh, fine. Okay, Grant. Yeah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> you need to move faster, Milton. Uh, and then you walk to there. I'll give you the points. So you walk back briskly at a good pace. Everyone's home. Nobody, nobody gets hurt. Uh, <laughs> okay. Iraq, Afghanistan, Zimbabwe. <laughs> that was a badly planned cycling holiday. <laughs> now you've, uh, no, you've gone too far now. Okay, here we go. The first subject tonight is unlikely things to hear at an award ceremony. Our next award is for most inaccurate weather forecast of the year. Let's look at the 9,000 nominees. <laughs> Welcome to the Islamic Awards for Acting, or as we call them, the Moscas. <laughs> Come on, God, so many people to thank. Um, where to begin? Uh, obvious one, I suppose. Hitler. Uh, what? 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 <laughs> and the award for best envelope glue goes to. <laughs> <laughs> now, teacher of the year. Quieten down. It's your own time you're wasting. <laughs> time now for us to celebrate some of the stars of show business who sadly are still with us. <laughs> I'll just open the envelope. Uh, oh, it's full of gold. <laughs> and the award for special effects goes to the team behind Gordon Brown's smile. <laughs> and now we're going to watch a film showing some of the people that we've lost this year, including two you didn't even know were dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'd bang that, I'd bang that, wouldn't bang that, I'd bang that. <laughs> anyway, the award for best actress goes to... <laughs> Welcome to the Accident at Work Awards. <laughs> <laughs> and winner of the Suicide Bomber of the Year. I'm afraid they couldn't be with us tonight. <laughs> And the winner of the best scientist in physics is... There's no ramp, Stephen Hawkins. It's not you. <laughs> okay, the next topic is... Unlikely lines to hear in a Hollywood blockbuster. Nemo, where the fuck have you been? <laughs> Look, Mr. Bond, do you want to hire the Ford Focus or not? <laughs> Mr. Vader, we are the Child Support Agency. <laughs> you want the truth? You can't handle the truth! Welcome to the Fox News Channel. <laughs> Warning, this film contains Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Spider-Man, look out! 
Jack, it's rolled up newspaper man! <laughs> Excuse me, sorry, where do you want to go, Hans? <laughs> it's here, got bone. <laughs> M, I've worked out what to do with Goldfinger. What we do is we put him in a big envelope, mark, cash my gold. <laughs> what do you think of my father's for justice costume, Robin? <laughs> Cracking heroin, Grummet. <laughs> Look, I, I'm just an ex-Prime Minister standing before an Iraq inquiry, asking them to love him. <laughs> oi! 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 Hermione! Kokos in Gorgio! <laughs> right? So this mission is impossible. Let's not bother. <laughs> Andy Dufresne. When he walked into Shawshank, I knew he was fucked. <laughs> Revenge will be mine, Mr. Bond, when we meet in small claims court. Use the force, Luke! And if that doesn't work, turn it off and turn it back on again. <laughs> No, no, no. edition of Mock the Week. This show is a selection of outtakes, best of material, and a lot of you won't have seen before. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> yes, the answer I was looking for was Tory's launch election campaign. It's election time again, with David Cameron saying this year's vote could not come soon enough. Although the date is as yet to be confirmed by the Prime Minister, the Conservatives have begun announcing their policies in a bid to woo voters and regain power. So how do they launch the campaign? Well, mainly by putting up a big poster of his face. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's, he's wearing so much makeup, he might as well just say, Tory, because you're worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it is astonishing. It, it is, I just think they yeah. should have run, it's like on 760 poster sites, they should have just run this poster instead. Look at my <laughs> big shiny face. <laughs> Look at it! Look at it! Look at the way my forehead glow follows you around the room. Uh, he looks like a cross between David Dickinson and Pingan. <laughs> a cross that we've all been waiting a long time to see. <laughs> you really that penguin vote. Yeah. No one's gone after that before. <laughs> 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 if you did, did all of us things by waddling around. <laughs> 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 they would close down CBeebies, wouldn't they? What are you doing, Dickinson? <laughs> Leave him alone! <laughs> Take it, you little bastard. Take it. <laughs> I can't waddle away quick enough. Uh. <laughs> How much do you have to love yourself, you know, to launch your, your campaign with no policies and just a big picture of your own face? <laughs> you know, yeah. we kind of now know what both leaders are going to say to us. Gordon Bryan's going to say, don't trust the Tories, they'll put up taxes. And basically David Cameron saying, don't you wish your girlfriend was? <laughs> 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 What you have to remember is that Cameron was in PR. I mean, PR. I mean, I was 12 years old and I had a paper round. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very... Uh... It's a poster. He's trying, to sell the... he's trying to sell it on the NHS, isn't he? That's the, that's the image he's got. It's all about the NHS. And now I'm slightly worried that Gordon Brown is going to have a poster about health as well. Mm. With a big picture of Gordon Brown and then next to it, catch it, kill it, bin it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not only having a 
have issues with the big shiny face. Uh, I also have problems with the slogan. Yeah. You know, because every time I see that, uh, we can't go on like this. In my brain, the bit goes, with suspicious mind. <laughs> see what he also, he also said, didn't he? He said there are some parts of Britain where actually you're more likely to see your dad drunk than doing a day's work. I wonder where that is then. Is it the House of Commons? <laughs> 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 Well, my dad doesn't drink, like, but generally there are parts of Britain which one is more likely to see your father drunk He's than at work. A pub, a pub, for example. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing here? Well, I don't work here. What the hell are you doing here? Yeah. When I was little, right, my dad used to enjoy a drink. He won't mind uh, me telling the nation. Um, <laughs> well, you used to enjoy a drink. I know, but listen, listen, it's really weird. So I remember once I was asleep and I heard, Greetings, Russell. I was terrified. And it took me two weeks to figure out that he put a walkie talkie underneath my bed. <laughs> and every time he was getting in piss, he was like, Oh, yeah. Oh, scary. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good when Dad's drinking. Like, oh, there was another bit in the middle of getting drunk where he'd sober up and realised that this was a horrendous thing to do to a child. <laughs> <laughs> it's not horrendous, it's hilarious. I found it, did I confront it, put it under my brother's bed. <laughs> So we, could, we had friends who had, uh, who had a baby monitor. Uh, yep. They were staying in the hotel with a baby monitor with a baby next door, and you could talk through your side of the monitor and talk to your child in the next room, right? So when they heard the child crying, and uh, they went, no, it's all right, you can go to sleep, it's okay, we're only next door, it's all fine. And then they heard the ch small child replying and go, okay, good night, wall. <laughs> Picture of the week. I show the panel an image from a recent story and ask them to tell me what's going on. So, teams, what's going on here? <laughs> oh, a short policeman and a very the... tall policeman. This, this is the from... um, controversial is... new "Bring Your Child to Work." <laughs> <laughs> That's, <laughs> harsh. That's hard. Is this from Heat Magazine? The story that Deck has got a part in the bill without telling Ant. I would be saying you couldn't buy me some packs, could you? <laughs> Do you know what's, what's great about this story? He is the, uh, the smallest policeman in the country. He's five foot tall, right? But the woman laughing, just the idea of that. <laughs> but, but he's made 17 arrests this week, and I bet you money a lot of those revolve around the words umpa lumpa. <laughs> yes. What did you say? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, say, I say most of the handcuffs are around people's ankles. Uh... <laughs> Do you know he's a black belt in karate? Yeah, he I retract everything I've just said about the man. Yeah. Yeah. What's bizarre yeah. about it, right? He can arrest a man, but he can't go on some ride to Orton Towers. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, if you're ever running away from him, just go on a ride he can't get on. <laughs> It's actually not that small, right? It's, it's five foot. That's pretty small. It's very it's small, but he's not, like, you know, tiny, tiny. If you think he's saying to the other one, I hope nobody's photographing this, I look ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> do you know, do you know, do you know what his nickname is? What his nickname is? Titch Piglet. No. <laughs> no, not Piglet. Is he... Is there, is he no, there was no way this was going to be treated he, sensitively here, was there? No. There's no way it's going to be. Stop. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him. And getting a job that would have previously been yeah. shut down to him. No, no, no. His nickname... Inspector Gadget? No. <laughs> Nickname is Laptop. Uh, <laughs> people say he isn't really useful, but he can be very useful because if you think about it, they can dress him up as a kid and catch Peter. <laughs> Just put him near some swings and he's a black belt when the nonce arrives. Kabang! <laughs> the, the one on the left's wearing uh, an, an overcoat and the one on the right isn't. And it just goes to prove, once again, that when it comes to performance, a Mac is head and shoulders over a PC. <laughs> Other news, who has gobbled up Cadbury this week? Kraft. Kraft, yeah. Yes, indeed. Kraft, whose only contribution to human progress so far is the invention of cheese that can also be used as a bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the guy who invented Kraft, I think it was like John Kraft or something, his original job was the company built itself. He was a door-to-door -door cheese salesman. Well, actually... If you were doing from another era, would you ever trust Ding Dong? Would you like some cheese? No! <laughs> Door to door. I can beat that. My mate, when he was younger, used to be a door to door karate salesman. <laughs> can he do karate? No, he can't. <laughs> that, that question there could have been answered so many. You could have asked that question any week. Who gobbled up Cadbury's this week? Obviously, this week it's Kraft. Most weeks it would be sad, lonely women at that hey, sort of hey, hey, I'll tell you what, though. I'm lonely. Yeah, you I'm might not lonely. And also, <laughs> there is something. No, I'm worried about dairy milk though, because it, I don't know where I'm, it's my one source of milk. <laughs> 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 so what's in the dairy milk? Your bones will be nothing, you know? Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> and the news they kept saying, uh, they just kept saying that uh, Cadbury's had been taken over by an American food giant. And I was thinking, you're going to have to be more specific, because about half of the population of America could technically uh, be described yeah. as American yeah. food giant. Yeah. <laughs> you could say that the Jolly Green giant, he's one of yours, isn't he? He's, he's British, you could say that, he could defend He's British, giant. he's fictional, British. Dara. <laughs> fictional British. So he's green, what would make you think he wasn't one of yours? <laughs> about British institutions becoming foreign when the royal family have been German since 1700. <laughs> There are a guy called Reagan. Reagan is the, a retired policeman who stands outside British companies when they're about to be bought. Uh, in edition of Mock the Week. This show is a selection of outtakes, best of material, and a lot of you won't have seen before. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> yes, the answer I was looking for was Tories launch election campaign. It's election time again, with David Cameron saying this year's vote could not come soon enough. Although the date is as yet to be confirmed by the Prime Minister, the Conservatives have begun announcing their policies in a bid to woo voters and regain power. So how do they launch the campaign? Well, mainly by putting up a big poster of his face. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's, he's wearing so much makeup, he might as well just say, Tory, because you're worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it is astonishing. It is, it is, I just think they yeah. should have run, it's like on 750 poster sites, they should have just run this poster instead. Look at my <laughs> big shiny face. <laughs> Look at it! Look at it! Look at the way my forehead glow follows you around the room. Uh, he looks like a cross between David Dickinson and Pingan. <laughs> a cross that we've all been waiting a long time to see. <laughs> yeah. 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 That penguin vote. Yeah. No one's gone after that before. <laughs> 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 If you did all of this, it seems like waddling around. <laughs> <laughs> also, if they ever did that, they would close down CBB. So when they, what are you doing, Dickinson? Leave him alone! <laughs> take it, take it, you little bastard. Take it. <laughs> no, no. I can't waddle away quick enough. Uh. <laughs> How much do you have to love yourself, you know, to launch your, your campaign with no policies and just a big picture of your own face? <laughs> you know, yeah. we kind of now know what both leaders are going to say to us. Gordon Bryan's going to say, don't trust the Tories, they'll put up taxes. And basically David Cameron saying, don't you wish your girlfriend was? <laughs> 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 What you have to remember is that Cameron was in PR. I mean, PR. I mean, I was 12 years old and I had a paper round. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very... Uh, it's a poster. He's trying, to sell the, he's trying to sell it on the NHS, isn't he? That's the, that's the image he's got. It's all about the NHS. And now I'm slightly worried that Gordon Brown is going to have a poster about health as well. Mm. With a big picture of Gordon Brown and then next to it, catch it, kill it, bin it. <laughs> had issues with the big shiny face. Uh, I also have problems with the slogan. Yeah. Because you know, yeah. every time I see that, uh, we can't go on like this. In my brain, the baby goes, with suspicious mind. <laughs> see what he also, he also said, didn't he? He said there are some parts of Britain where actually you're more likely to see your dad drunk than doing a day's work. I wonder where that is then. Is it the House of Commons? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about my drink, but generally there are parts of Britain in which one is more likely to see your father drunk is than at work. Pubs? A pub, for example. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing here? Well, I don't work here. What the hell are you doing here? Yeah. When I was little, right, my dad used to enjoy a drink. He won't mind uh, me telling the nation. Um, <laughs> well, you but, used to enjoy a drink. Hello, but listen, listen, it's really weird. So I remember once I was asleep and I heard, Greetings, Russell. I was terrified. And it took me two weeks to figure out that he put a walkie talkie underneath my bed. <laughs> <laughs> and every time he was getting in pissed, he was like, Oh, yeah. Oh, scary. <laughs> <laughs> so it is good when Dad's drinking. Nice. Well, there was another bit in the middle of getting drunk where he'd sober up and realised that this was a horrendous thing to do to a child. <laughs> <laughs> it's not horrendous, it's hilarious. I found it, did I confront it, put it under my brother's bed. <laughs> So yeah, we, could, we had friends who had, uh, who had a baby monitor, uh, yeah. staying in the hotel with a baby monitor with a baby next door, and you could talk through your side of the monitor and talk to your child in the next room, right? So when they heard the child crying, and uh, they went, no, it's all right, you can go to sleep, it's okay, we're only next door, it's all fine. And then they heard the ch small child replying and go, okay, good night, wall. <laughs> Pick 
picture of the week. I showed the panel an image from a recent story and asked them to tell me what's going on. So, teams, what's going on here? Oh, a very cool basement and a very the, tall basement. This is, this is the from um, controversial it, new Bring Your Child to Work. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's hard. Is this from Heat Magazine, the story that Deck has got a part in the bill without telling Ant? <laughs> I would be saying, you couldn't buy me some bags, could you? <laughs> Do you know what's, what's great about this story? He is the, uh, the smallest policeman in the country. He's five foot tall, right? But the woman laughing, just the idea of that. <laughs> but, but he's made 17 arrests this week, and I bet you money a lot of those revolve around the words umpa lumpa. <laughs> I'd say most of the handcuffs around people's ankles. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's a black belt in karate. Yeah, he I would track everything I've just said about the man. Uh, <laughs> what's what's bizarre yeah. about it, right? He can arrest a man, but he can't go on some ride to Orton Towers. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, if you're ever running away from him, just go on a ride he can't get on. <laughs> It's actually not that small, right? It's, it's five it, foot. That's pretty small. It's very it's small, but he's not like, you know, tiny, tiny. If you think he's saying to the other one, I hope nobody's photographing this, I look ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, you know what his nickname is? What his nickname is? Pitch Piglet. No. <laughs> no, not Piglet. Is he... Is there, is he no, there was no way this was going to be too sensitively here, was it? There's no, there's 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 no way it's going to be. Good for him. Good for him. And getting a job that would have previously been shut down to him. No, no, no. His nickname... Inspector Gadget? No. <laughs> Nickname is Laptop. Uh. People say he isn't really useful, but he can be very useful because if you think about it, they can dress him up as a kid and catch Peter. <laughs> Just, Just put him near some swings and he's a black belt. When the nonce arrives, kabang! <laughs> the, the one on the left's wearing uh, an, an overcoat and the one on the right isn't. And it just goes to prove, once again, that when it comes to performance, a Mac is head and shoulders over a PC. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, who has gobbled up Cadbury this week? Kraft. Kraft, yeah. Yes, indeed. Kraft, whose only contribution to human progress so far is the invention of cheese that can also be used as a bookmark. <laughs> A, the guy who invented Kraft, his name was like John Kraft or something. His original job was the company built itself. He was a door-to-door -door cheese salesman. Well, actually... It was from another era. Would you ever trust... Ding dong! We'd like some cheese. No! <laughs> a man walking door-to-door! -door. I can beat that. My mates, when he was younger, used to be a door-to-door -door karate salesman. <laughs> Can he do karate? No, he can't. <laughs> that, that question there could have been answered so many... You could have asked that question any week. Who gobbled up Cadbury's this week? Obviously, this week it's Kraft. Most weeks it would be sad, lonely women at that uh, sort of... Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. I'm lonely, yeah, you might, I'm yeah. lonely. Also, <laughs> there is something... No, I'm genuinely worried about dairy milk, though, because it... I don't know where I'm... It's my one source of milk. <laughs> <laughs> So what's in the day that your bones will be nothing, you know? Like, <laughs> and, you, and the news they kept saying, uh, they just kept saying that uh, Cadbury's had been taken over by an American food giant. And I was thinking, you're going to have to be more specific, because about half the population of America could technically be described yeah. as American yeah. food giants. Yeah. <laughs> you can say that the Jolly Green giant, he's one of yours, isn't he? He's, he's British, you can say that he could defend He's giant. British, he's fictional, Dara. Oh, what else? <laughs> fictional British. No, he's green. What would make you think he wasn't one of yours? <laughs> about British institutions becoming foreign when the royal family have been German since 1700. <laughs> <laughs> there was a guy called Ray Egan. Ray Egan is the, a retired policeman who stands outside British companies when they're about to be bought uh, in order to protest it, actually, and stands like that, uh, dresses up as John Bull, uh, Kraft. And what I love about it is the fact that he goes, Hey! Hey! <laughs> yeah. hey. Uh, and I just Kraft go to hell, but hey! So Kraft will turn, yeah? Go to hell. Uh, <laughs> There was this big thing with all the phone debates when people were phoning up complaining and it was a beautiful moment of radio. I don't know if anyone heard it, but there was a woman on the phone saying, it's terrible what they've done, it's terrible that, that we're allowing them to sell a British institution like Cadbury's. And, and the radio presenter, who was Jeremy Vine, actually said, well, well, are you going to join the calls for a, a boycott of Cadbury's chocolate? She went, oh, I won't go that far. <laughs> me a box of 48 bars, the standard size bars of dairy milk for Christmas and I think she thought it would be like one a day and it would last for ages and I just opened it with a kitchen knife. <laughs> <laughs> I did think about putting them all out on the bed and like writhing around naked like in a portal. Don't do that. Never, never mix They're sexy hard. chocolate. It's Women really? tend to look like morph. <laughs> Our next 
Dan, it's called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask you to suggest what might be being said. This week's clip features the G20 leaders. Well, uh, saving the world financial system, that was me. What else? Uh, inventing the space hopper, that was me. Battle of Agincourt, uh, that was me. Um, so, Obama, we need to talk about Gordon Brown. Uh, yes, I know. He's, uh, he's claiming credit for everything. It's a problem. He, uh, he needs to be stopped. Yes, well, I will have a word with our friends, the Russians, see if they can use their methods. <laughs> yeah, well, that's okay, but when it happens, my country can't be implicated in any way. There must be no mess, and we don't know what happened, okay? Oh, oh, my piles. <laughs> We're just talking about you. Yes, I know. I have you bugged. <laughs> <laughs> about Gordon Brown. Yes, the Gordon Brown problem. Well, leave it with me. I'll talk to Putin. So, it needs to look like an accident, yes? <laughs> oh, time for my Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your, your chance over there! No chance over there! You're moving! Shut up! Oh, Nico! I'll be with you in a minute. I'm just looking through the Hollyoaks calendar of 2010. <laughs> oh, look at the box on that. Uh, could you do Berlusconi in a two-for-one deal? 